The genetic origins of populations associated with Germanic tribes are complex and multifaceted, shaped by interactions across millennia. Analysis of ancient DNA reveals three primary ancestral components. The first component comes from Western hunter-gatherer groups, often marked by mitochondrial haplogroups U4 and U5. The second major contribution is from early European farmers, carrying maternal lineages such as H and T2, introduced during the Neolithic transition. The third and most transformative is the input from Bronze Age steppe pastoralists identified by Y chromosome markers like R1b, who arrived during the third millennium BC. Certain Northern European populations, particularly in regions associated with Germanic tribes, display a distinctive genetic makeup. This includes high frequencies of certain Y chromosome haplogroup reaching up to 35% in some areas, alongside diverse maternal lineages, including H1, U5b, and J1c. The genetic structure of these populations reflects specific ancestry proportions, approximately 50% step related 35% early farmer, and 15% Western hunter-gatherer contributions, though these ratios vary by region. This unique genetic blend, coupled with adaptations like lactase persistence and markers for cold tolerance, likely reflects both environmental pressures in Northern Europe and cultural innovations over time. Their genetic legacy reveals not a single origin point, but rather a dynamic process of adaptation and integration that created something entirely new, a distinctive Germanic genetic profile that would help shape the future of European populations. Now let's delve deeper into this fascinating topic. The tale begins in the harsh aftermath of the last ice age, where small bands of resilient hunter-gatherers clung to survival in refugia, sheltered areas across Europe that remained habitable during the glacial maximum. These early Europeans weren't yet Germanic, as we would come to know them, but they carried genetic signatures that would become fundamental to the later Germanic peoples. What mysteries lie in the DNA of these ancient survivors? As the massive ice sheets began their retreat around 12,000 years ago, these populations slowly expanded northward, following the retreating glaciers and adapting to new landscapes. Modern genetic studies reveal a complex pattern of migrations and intermixing, showing how these Ice Age survivors carried specific genetic markers that remain present in modern Germanic populations at notably high frequencies. But how did these early Europeans transform into the distinct Germanic groups we recognize from historical records? The answer lies in waves of migration and cultural exchange that occurred over millennia. Around 7,000 years ago, a significant shift occurred as agricultural communities from the Near East began moving into Europe, bringing with them not just new ways of life, but also new genetic lineages. These farmers, carrying genetic markers like haplogroup H, didn't simply replace the hunter-gatherers. Instead, they gradually mixed with them, creating a unique genetic tapestry. The Yamnaya migration transformed Europe's genetic landscape around 3000 BC, as these steppe pastoralists brought revolutionary changes in technology and genes. Their distinctive genetic markers, particularly R1b Z2103 and R1b L23 Y chromosome lineages, spread rapidly across the continent. Archaeological evidence shows they introduced horse domestication, wheeled vehicles, and new metallurgical techniques that gave them significant advantages. These nomadic herders carried specific genetic variants linked to increased height, fair hair, and lactase persistence, traits that would become common in later Germanic populations. DNA analysis from Yamnaya burial sites reveals they contributed between 40 to 60% of the genetic ancestry of early Germanic peoples. 
Their genetic impact was so profound that when scientists analyzed Bronze Age remains from southern Scandinavia, they found a dramatic shift. Within a few generations, local populations showed up to 75% Yamnaya-derived ancestry. Moreover, the discovery of specific mutations in genes controlling fat metabolism like CPT1A and FADS1 suggests the Yamnaya were already adapted to process the high-protein, high-fat diet that would become crucial for survival in Northern Europe. These genetic adaptations, combined with their technological innovations, help explain their remarkable success in reshaping the genetic makeup of prehistoric European populations. The North European Plain tells a fascinating story through genetics. Along the coastal regions, DNA analysis reveals specific adaptations in vitamin D processing genes, crucial for survival in sunlight-limited northern region. The great rivers of Europe, the Elbe, Oder, and Vistula, acted as genetic highways, creating distinct patterns of genetic markers that cluster along these ancient waterways. But what makes each Germanic tribe genetically unique? Ancient burial grounds from 500 to 100 BC reveal distinct regional patterns. The Cherusky tribes of central Germany show unique combinations of maternal lineages, particularly mitochondrial haplogroups H1 and U5b, suggesting complex marriage patterns and female mobility between communities. Coastal tribes like the Frisii maintained higher percentages of I1m 253 lineages, revealing strong maritime connections with Scandinavian populations that differ from inland groups. And how exactly did different environments shape Germanic genetics? Each region presented unique challenges that led to specific adaptations. Coastal populations developed variants of the FADS1 gene cluster, optimizing their ability to process marine-based diets. Forest-dwelling communities show different genetic patterns, with variants linked to processing plant-based nutrients more efficiently. Analysis of ancient teeth reveals these dietary adaptations emerged gradually over many generations as communities specialized in different food sources. This combination of geography and genetics reveals how Germanic tribes developed distinct regional characteristics while maintaining trading networks and cultural connections. But did mastering bronze reshape early Germanic tribes' genetic legacy? The evidence lies in burial mounds across Northern Europe, where DNA tells a remarkable story. Elite Germanic families, particularly in modern-day Denmark and Northern Germany, carried distinctive genetic markers, I1M253, that kept appearing in wealthy burials filled with elaborate bronze work. These weren't just random craftsmen. They were powerful dynasties, maintaining their position through carefully planned marriages. The most intriguing evidence comes from female burials in Germanic settlements. DNA preserved in bone combs and jewelry reveals how women from distant tribes carrying distinct maternal lineages, particularly J and T haplogroups, married into established metalworking families. These marriages created a network across Germanic territories, spreading not just metalworking secrets, but also new genetic lineages that would influence generations. Germanic adaptation to new bronze technology shows in their very DNA. When scientists analyzed remains from settlements along the amber trade routes, they found something fascinating. Germanic communities with advanced bronze working showed different genetic variants for food processing. As these tribes mastered bronze cauldrons and cooking tools, their bodies were literally adapting to new ways of preparing food. They weren't just crafting bronze, they were crafting their future, creating genetic patterns that would help define Germanic populations for generations to come. The emergence of proto-Germanic language coincided with interesting genetic developments. Linguistic and genetic evidence suggests that around 3,000 years ago, as the Bronze Age was giving way to the Iron Age, 
a relatively isolated population in southern Scandinavia underwent what geneticists call a bottleneck, a reduction in genetic diversity that helped establish some of the distinctive genetic patterns we associate with Germanic peoples today. But how did Iron Age innovations influence genetic mixing? The mastery of ironworking, beginning around 2,500 years ago, brought new patterns of interaction. Unlike bronze, iron ore was more widely available, leading to more dispersed settlement patterns. Genetic studies of Iron Age remains show increased diversity in Y-chromosome haplogroups, particularly R1A and N1C, suggesting new waves of cultural and genetic exchange from the East. Recent analysis of mass graves from Germanic-Roman conflicts reveals surprising insights. DNA from warrior burial sites shows something unexpected. Germanic warriors carried genetic markers from across Northern Europe, suggesting armies weren't formed from single tribes, but drew fighters from vast networks of alliances. Their bones tell tales of shared combat, shared meals, and eventually shared bloodlines. DNA analysis from Roman border settlements reveals complex family histories. Children's remains show mixed Germanic-Roman heritage, with maternal DNA, particularly haplogroup H, often matching local Germanic patterns, while paternal lines show Mediterranean origins. These weren't just military conquests, they were stories of romance, commerce, and cultural fusion along the empire's edge. It is fascinating to find how Germanic priests influence genetic patterns. Analysis of ritual sites shows something fascinating. Religious leaders often carried unique combinations of genetic markers, notably R1A variants, distinct from local populations. This suggests spiritual leaders moved between tribes, spreading not just beliefs, but also their genes, creating networks of related holy families across Germanic territories. But when Germanic tribes adopted Roman customs, did it change their genetic makeup? Burial sites from Romanized Germanic settlements show a clear pattern. Communities that adopted Roman urban living developed different genetic variants for disease resistance compared to their forest-dwelling cousins. Their DNA reveals adaptations to crowded living conditions, showing how lifestyle changes literally rewrote their genetic code. Also, let's find out, what role did women play in these genetic exchanges? Strontium isotope analysis of female skeletons from Germanic settlements reveals surprising mobility patterns. Many women moved between communities, creating networks of genetic exchange that crossed tribal boundaries. Their mitochondrial DNA lineages tell stories of long-distance marriages and alliances that helped bind different Germanic groups together. One of the most fascinating genetic mysteries solved recently is the case of the mysterious Lombard cemeteries in Solard, Hungary. But something made archaeologists scratch their heads for decades. These 6th century burial grounds contained individuals buried with distinctly Lombard artifacts, but historians long debated whether these were actually Lombard people or local populations simply adopting Lombard customs. What did the teeth and bones of these ancient people reveal? In 2018, an unprecedented genetic study of 40 individuals from these cemeteries provided a breakthrough. The analysis of both their genetic material and isotope ratios exposed something remarkable. These weren't just people imitating Lombard culture, they were part of an actual organized migration. But here's where it gets really interesting. The DNA showed that many of these individuals carried the R1BU 106Y chromosome haplogroup and U5A1 mitochondrial DNA lineages. They formed biological family units that had moved together across Europe. And how did this discovery change our understanding of Germanic migrations? The genetic evidence revealed that these people carried a distinctive combination of haplogroups. Particularly, the RNBU106 paternal lineage was found in over 60% of the high-status male burials. 
maternal mitochondrial haplogroups H1, U5A1, and K1C linked them directly to northern and central European populations. This perfectly matched the historical accounts of Lombard migration from the Elbe River region. The DNA analysis showed something the historical records never mentioned. These weren't just warriors moving across Europe, but entire family groups maintaining their genetic distinctiveness. Here is what that made this case study particularly groundbreaking. The researchers found that individuals buried with rich Lombard grave goods predominantly carried the U5A1 or H1 mitochondrial lineages. Those in simpler graves often showed more diverse genetic profiles, including I1M253 and local E1B1B paternal lineages. This provided the first direct genetic evidence that the social structure described in Lombard written laws had a biological basis. It showed that family groups maintained their status across generations. The study even solved another long-standing mystery. Why did some graves contain local artifacts while others held Lombard ones? The genetic analysis revealed that the community included both Lombard families and local individuals. Lombard families were marked by their distinctive R1BU106 and U5A1 lineages. Local individuals carried more diverse genetic markers. This showed how Germanic tribes could maintain their distinct identity while also integrating newcomers. This case study fundamentally changed our understanding of early medieval migrations. Rather than being chaotic invasions, they were organized movements of entire family groups. Genetic studies in the Netherlands and northern Germany have explored correlations between Y-chromosome haplogroups and regional surnames, revealing intriguing patterns. Haplogroup R1b, particularly subclades like R1bz301, is associated with Northwest European ancestry and shows a higher frequency among individuals with Frisian surnames such as those ending in stra. Similarly, in Denmark, surnames ending in gard have been linked to haplogroup I1M, 253, particularly the subclade I1L22, reflecting historical connections to medieval farming settlements. In northern Germany, surnames containing elements like sax are often associated with haplogroup R1BU106, aligning with regions historically linked to Saxon populations. However, these patterns represent general trends rather than strict rules, as individual surnames can arise from various social and historical factors. The relationship between surnames and genetic markers highlights how population movements, intermarriage, and regional cultural practices have shaped modern genetic diversity. While genetic markers provide insights into ancestry, it is crucial to recognize the complexities of surname origins and inheritance. If you're fascinated by how genetics is revolutionizing our understanding of history, join us for more journeys into humanity's past. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.